Olá, internautas. Estamos aqui retomando as, as nossas entrevistas. Hoje nós estamos aqui com o professor Michael Heinrich, que ele é lá da Alemanha, fez a biografia do Karl Marx, ele é do projeto Mega, um grande projeto, ele vai explicar depois né, que ele fez aqui essa biografia, depois ele vai explicar o que é este projeto Mega de resgate dos originais do Marx, do Engels. O professor também participou do seminário da Fundação Maurício Grabois, realizado agora no dia 19, um seminário aí do bicentenário do nascimento do Karl Marx. Enfim, é uma autoridade no assunto de reconhecimento internacional. Bem-vindo, professor. Está aqui também com a gente o Felipe Musetti. É assim que pronuncia? Felipe é, Musetti? Sim. Ele é mestre em filosofia pela PUC, doutorando em filosofia pela PUC e também formado em Direito pela USP, é isso? Pela PUC. Pela PUC. Filosofia eu me formei pela USP. Ah, tá. Filosofia ele se formou pela USP. E é também um estudioso do assunto, estuda o Marx. Enfim, nós estamos aqui na presença de duas autoridades <risos> em marxismo, em estudo do marxismo, do Marx e tal. Eu queria começar perguntando para o professor Michael sobre esta biografia a importância que tem a biografia, que ele falasse um pouco, enfim, da biografia, resumisse para a gente o que é esta biografia. Um, there are a lot of uh, biographies of Marx existing, and so it is clear that I have to justify that I not only produce a new biography, but such an extensive biography. There are some general reasons in order to better understand Marx's life and work, But there is also a very uh, immediate political reason for this biography. In the last years, the conflict about Marx, the struggle about Marx, was also um, done in the field of biographies. For example, the last, the two last big biographies um, about Marx from Jonathan Sperber in the year 2013 and the biography uh, written by Gareth Stedman Jones, um, both argued that Marx is an interesting figure of 19th century, but he has nothing or not very much to tell us today. Both are translated in, in Portuguese. Both uh, biographers uh, argue that Marx is an interesting figure of 19th century, but has uh, not very much to tell us today. And I argue that Marx is a figure of uh, 19th century is a banality. What else he, he can be? But we have to look what means 19th century. I think that in 19th century very important structures of the modern world, industrial capitalism, a parliamentary political system, mass political parties, mass media emerged, which are still important. Marx researched on all this, he was an, an activist on all this, and therefore I choose as a title for the biography Karl Marx and the birth of modern society. So my program is just the opposite program than that of Sperber and Stedman Jones. But on the other hand I also have um, not only these political reasons, I also have um, scientific reasons to, to come to a better understanding of Marx's uh, life and work. When you look at Marx's work as a whole uh, over these 40 years where he was active, his big projects, his, he started big projects, was interrupted. He had newly to start them, again interruption, 
again a new start but the, none of the big projects were completed and to understand fully uh, what happened we have to look on the one hand to the development of work but also we have to look to the life what were the conflicts of life the political struggles of Marx which uh, caused him to change sometimes to interrupt his theoretical work sometimes to use his theoretical work as an intervention in political struggles all these connections we have to understand and what I also try very much uh, to do is to uh, throw light on the environment of Marx, in which environment he lived, what were the persons who are important for Marx, and to, to uh, take these persons really serious. For example, there are a lot of uh, former friends of Marx, then came a political split with them, like Bruno Bauer, like uh, Proudhon or Bakunin. And very often such persons are only considered from the point of view of the split which, which Marx did, from the critique. But I think we have to take such persons serial, serious in order to understand why for several years they were so important for Marx, they could uh, cooperate so much, and we, we have to, to study them much more deeply than it happened in the past. So many biographies just try to present what already exists in, in a nice language, in, in a nice setting. For me, this biography is a real research project which shall uh, give new information, new views, and not only old views uh, in, a la in a nice uh, setting. I want to have more questions. É, uma, para ele dizer a previsão, ele vai fazer três volumes, é isso? Eu sei que previsão, e a outra, já emendando, tá. que ele faz aqui uma polêmica com as biografias, né? ele hum. comenta aqui, e hum. ele diz que biografias normalmente são, é, são desvalorizadas, né? hum. e que ele polemiza e diz que não, a biografia tem uma importância. Então, que ele falasse essas duas questões. Uh, okay, first uh, the perspective of, of writing, of uh, finishing. Um, until now I have a, a concrete aim for publishing the second volume. It shall be published uh, in summer or autumn 2020 before we celebrate the 200th anniversary of Friedrich Engels because the second volume will incorporate a lot of material about the young Engels. And I hope that I can present the, the third volume and perhaps a fourth uh, volume also um, within two, three years more. But I have to stress it is a an open research project uh, and uh, there um, things can happen which you didn't expect it and maybe you need more time but I I try really to to come to an end with it. Now to the second question about uh, importance of uh, biography. Um, biography is a very broad uh, genre and uh, some biographies of Marx, but also of, of other persons, have no clear distinction between a biography, what wants to, um, to present a person, and a novel about the per person. And such biographies are also usually full of psychological speculations. Uh, as a reader, you, you often think, oh, the biographer, uh, did he accompany the person <laughs> he, he writes about? So, my project is definitely not uh, such a project. Of course, I want to, to write in a nice style. I want that 
people can, can read this, but I want that the material I present, the way I present, uh, follows scientific standards. But there is a, a problem with biographies, especially for, for leftists. As leftists, we stress that what is important for history are social structures, are class struggles, and that history is not the result of the action of some single uh, important persons. But when you write a biography, you have to focus on a single person. And in order to cope with this problem, I think you cannot write a biography in a naive way to say, okay, I collect some information about this person. I must uh, give an account about my methodological um, considerations and therefore I wrote an appendix in this biography about the way I write biography the way I am uh, connected with the discussion about scientific biographies, what they can do and what they cannot do, a discussion which was um, done as well in uh, the science of history as well in the uh, science of literature history. <laughs> Hoje em dia não dá mais para ser tão tosco, cultuar heróis, saiu de moda. Os ataques pessoais se tornaram mais sutis. E o Marx ainda é muito atacado. Né? Agora, essa resposta que ele deu. Então já, já existe uma escola, uma tendência a não entrar por aí. A não ficar no pugilato, podemos dizer assim, rebatendo os ataques a Marx. Um, there are some theoretical discussions about this since the 1980s, especially I, I know discussions at least in, in uh, Germany, in France and in, uh, in England, but there are uh, only very, very um, less examples where persons try to make use of, of such uh, discussions for writing biographies and uh, regarding the Marx biographies which exist uh, methodologically they really belong to 19th century. Uma questão que ele aborda aqui também nesse artigo que ele fala que nessas biografias, nos textos de Marx né, muitas questões é, foram deixadas em aberto né, curiosidades sobre algo ainda pouco conhecido ou mesmo simples é, ou simples questionar eu queria que ele comentasse um pouco isso como que ele avança nessa nessa questão ele falou lá no, no seminário que o Marx isso que ele acabou de dizer também o Marx deixou várias pontas e a partir daí um, se pega um, uma parte disso uhum. e tenta se desenvolver cria uma, cria assim uma certa confusão como é que ele trata isso na biografia nos estudos deles esses trabalhos inconclusos do Marx as ideias inconclusas Okay, um, in the biography I have the, the duty uh, to, to follow the line of development, to, to tell the whole story and not just to, to pick up uh, the best of or what I see as, uh, uh, as the best of. And especially I, I pay attention to the point of interruption. Why was an interruption at exactly this point? And why later was a new start, but in mostly with a somehow changed theoretical framework? He writes here also that it is true that someone like Marx, who intervened politically and so on, the question is the following, that he writes here, que o Marx agia sob circunstâncias bastante diferentes das que nos cercam hoje. Ele viveu o seu tempo, tinha suas conjunturas e tal. Aí ele complementa, mas determinados problemas estruturais da sua época são muito parecidos com os atuais. Eu queria que ele comentasse essa dialética, 
essa junção das coisas, dos tempos históricos e como é que isso pode ser interpretado pela teoria do Marx? Um, this is in, indeed uh, an important and also difficult uh, point. On the one hand, I stress that in 19th century, basic, basic structures emerged which still important today. And in so far, Marx was dealing with these basic structures of capitalism, of political uh, domination, and also discussing the, the question what means emancipation under these uh, conditions, he is still very actual. But on the other hand, I have to take into account that a lot of customs of everyday life, a lot of structures of um, universities, of science, uh, the science at the universities changed, that a lot of issues changed. For example, um, Marx uses a few times in capital the word natural law. Something is a natural law. There we have to take into account that the meaning of natural law in Marx times and today changed a lot. And this um, counts not only for such an obvious word like natural law, it counts also for um, a lot of fields which are very important for uh, writing the biography. In this uh, first volume, for example, I deal with the poems of Marx, which usually is said, yeah, they have uh, the spirit of romanticism. Mm -hmm. In 19th century and early 20th century, Romanticism was seen as a rather reactionary or at least conservative uh, tendency and so many Marxist biographers of Marx tried to play down the influence of Romanticism in Marx. So, when I used the term Romanticism, I couldn't do this in a naive way, just as if, it is, uh, if I could take this for granted. I give a very short sketch about the discussion about Romanticism during the last uh, 150 years, and especially stressing that in the second half of 20th century, we have a new view of Romanticism. And now we dis can distinguish between a rather progressive early Romanticism and a rather reactionary, religious, late Romanticism. Marx was on the one hand a contemporary of the late reactionary uh, Romanticism, but his writings, I try to show, are more based in this early progressive Romanticism. So, we have to take into account this, that Romanticism is much more complicated than usually is thought, but also I stress why did Marx overcome this idea to become a writer, to, to write poems? Okay, we have to, to take into account that Romanticism is much more complicated than usually it is uh, taken. But I have a further point. Why Marx gave up his plan to become a, a, a poet? Most biographers, starting with uh, Franz Mehring, the, the early biographer, just say, okay, Marx um, had the insight that he has not uh, enough talent to, to become a poet. I try to show that this was not the reason that the very young Marx um, read Hegel and according to, to my assumption he started to read this, uh, to read the aesthetic writings of Hegel where he found a fierce critic also of this early romanticism and because of Hegel's critic he was not able to follow the first road. Deal, Marx dealing with, with his poem, poems have 
a lot to do with his passage to Hegelian philosophy. But there we have the next problem. Hegelian philosophy, we also cannot just take for granted. It is discussed since 150 years in, in a very different way. And again, I have to present at least some lines of this discussing how we receive Hegelian philosophy depends on our tradition of, of uh, reception of this philosophy. So, to, to come to your answer, how I treat with um, the structures which are the same and uh, the, the things which changed in, in the time, I try to, to be aware that not only the object of my biography, Marx, uh, is situated in a certain historical context, but I, I try to be aware that also we nowadays situate it in a, in a certain context of actual questions but also of traditions of perceptions and that our situating in a context is shaping our view on Marx and this I try to make clear to the reader. Que o, o Marx nunca chegou a escrever o seu planejado estudo sobre o Estado. Ele discute incontáveis artigos, problemas políticos do seu tempo. Ele tem falado muito esse problema do Marx, jornalista e tal, que ele teria entrado muito aí nessa seara política. Eu queria que você perguntasse para ele se não houve uma subestimação desse aspecto do, do Marx inclusive na trajetória do desenvolvimento político do marxismo. Né? O Lenin, por exemplo, ele deu importância para isso. Que importância que isso teria hoje? E, fundamentalmente, se não houve essa subestimação da história. Sub subestimação né? dos, dos textos artigos, jornalistas. Isso. Uma vez que o Marx não conseguiu, conforme ele diz aqui, desenvolver o seu trabalho sobre o Estado. O que seria o Estado? Né? Como que o Marx desenvolveria isso? Né? Esse pensamento. The underestimation of these articles already starts with Marx himself. Uh, contrary to other authors, Marx didn't collect his articles, writing a nice preface, a nice introduction, and published them as a book. Marx not even had copies of each article. A part of these articles were published anonymously. So it is already a problem for us to collect the articles, to identify, we, we know the journals in, in, and newspapers in which Marx wrote, but to identify what is really an article of Marx and what not. And especially the mega project, the, the big Marx Engels uh, um, edition we do in Germany, brought dozens of new articles that now we can be sure this article anonymously published, it is also written from, uh, from Marx. And there are uh, essentially two, when we have the original manuscripts, it's, it's very easy, it's, it's very clear. But there is uh, essentially two methods to, to check this. The one are the letters of Marx. Sometimes certain issues are uh, mentioned by Marx in his letters to Engels or to other friends. And we can compare and see, oh, yes, this is exactly the argument also used in this anonymous article. So it's very probable that Marx uh, uh, is the author of the article. And the other uh, thing is to, to analyze stylistically the, the way of, of language and also to know which issues were important in which time for Marx and then we can say, okay, very probable that this article is from Marx. And sometimes it's also interesting not only to identify articles of Marx but also to identify other authors 
which were in contact with Marx. And so we, we see a certain environment. We, we can have a, a closer look to the environment. But um, you, in, in your question, uh, you mentioned also Lenin. And this is, for, for us, we should be very aware of it, that uh, such important uh, persons like Lenin or Rosa Luxemburg, they had very limited access to the works of Marx, from the big works, the, the early writings of Marx, uh, they, they died before they appeared. Um, uh, important economic writings like results of the immediate process of production or the Grundrisse appeared after uh, their death. And regarding the, the newspaper articles, also they already appeared and a part of them with the name of Marx, they had no access because they, they didn't um, exist in, in nicely books which were in, in library. Now, we are not only so lucky to have more of the articles of, of Marx, in Mega also his notebooks are published, his excerpts. And from these notebooks we can learn that some of the articles were prepared by Marx very intensively. For example, in the 1850s of 10 articles for New York Daily Tribune about Spanish Revolution in the first half of 19th century. Spanish revolutions, revolutions in the, the, the coup d'etats and, and so on. In the, and in these articles you can find the most extensive uh, discussion of the question of constitution. What, what is uh, the uh, written constitution? What is the importance of the constitution for the political process? And by the notebooks, now we know that these were not just remarks made out of the blue. There is in, in the fourth section of Mega nearly a whole volume with notes of Marx where he studied Spanish literature about uh, history, about uh, constitution and making his notes in Spanish, unfortunately. <laughs> 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 and therefore I, I expect that to do research on the many, the hundreds or, or more than thousand articles written by Marx, combining with the, the information we get from the notebooks. Of course I try to include in the biography, but I suppose to do the research on this material is really the task for the next generation of Marxist uh, researchers. É, ainda sobre essa questão, é, ele diz aqui que o Marx queria expor sua crítica é, da economia política em seis livros. Ele cita que capital, propriedade da terra, trabalho assalariado, Estado, comércio internacional, mercado mundial. Sintetizando as coisas. A pergunta seria, ele acha, ele, é possível deduzir que, a partir dessa constatação, que o Marx avançaria, tinha essa... Essa ideia seria mais um dos seus projetos iniciados e não terminados né, para é, debater em torno de tudo isso, a questão política, a questão do Estado, né, como, como, como se organizaria a nossa sociedade politicamente? Indeed, um... <laughs> Yes, mostly things are even more complicated. Um, Marx already starts uh, in the 1840s to um, produce a critique of political economy. It is the famous Paris manuscripts with the theory of alienation. And this manuscript should only be the starting point. It should be uh, followed by a critique of politics, a critique of philosophy, a critique critique of morality, uh, a critique of uh, law, right and, and law. Then when Marx was forced to go to exile to London, he started from the beginning the, the economic texts in the uh, library of the uh, British Museum and he developed a new project. 
He wanted, at the early 50s, he had a project of three parts. The first part should be a critique of uh, political um, economy. The second part should be um, a presentation and critique of the history of political economy. And the third part should be a history of the development and emergence of capitalism, the history of capitalism itself. I'm sorry, 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 I'm sorry,
o estilo de escrita do Marx. Ele era um jornalista fantástico, né? não sei se ele tem essa mesma impressão. É gostoso de ler, né? quem curte a literatura e tal. Mas eu queria que ele falasse, ele cita também o Bakunin, que ele já falou, e o Proudhon. Uhum. Né? É, a contribuição dessas pessoas, né? como a importância que Marx dava para isso, e como isso contribuiu para o desenvolvimento do seu pensamento, das suas elaborações. Né? Bruno Bauer um, plays a prominent role in this uh, first volume and also in, in the second volume, at least in, in the first half. Also Bruno Bauer will, will have an uh, important role. You mentioned with Bruno Bauer at once Holy Family. Um, this is very clear because Marx in Holy Family uh, wrote this fierce critic. I, in, in the first volume, I don't reach uh, Holy Family, which was published in uh, 1845. So, for me, Bruno Bauer um, plays a rather different role. I think it is important to see Bruno Bauer as he was before this critic. Bruno Bauer had a, a very quick development. He, he was a theologian, mainly influenced by Hegel. It, there was a whole school of Hegelian theologians in, in the 30s. A school which was so-called uh, the right wing, the, but right and left, not in the usual political sense, in, the, in a certain theological sense, um, related to, to the question, was the life of, uh, of Christ really given in the Gospels? Can, can we catch this life, place this a role? This is the right thing, or is this life only a myth and theology has to be independent from the, the narration of the gospel? There, were, there was a de debate about the real historical content of the gospels. Uh, the right wing uh, uh, of the Hegelian theologians said yes there is a real uh, historical uh, content and we need this. The left wing said the, the real life of Jesus plays no important role for the theology. We only need some ideas but not the real life. <laughs> It was everything was Protestantism, but Protestantism has different sides, and one side says yes, it is important that, for example, Jesus did miracles, said uh, Jesus resurrected, and there was already in 19th century a line of Protestantism. They said. Okay, these are a, a kind of mythology, um, and the truth of Christianity is not dependent on miracles or of the real physical uh, resurrection of Jesus. And Bruno Bauer first belonged to the right wing of these theologians. For example, he tried with Hegelian arguments to give a reason of the necessity of the virginity of Maria. <laughs> it was a, a very interesting gender discourse because Bauer argued the, the women and especially the virgins are able for perception. She can perceive the Holy Spirit. So the women, the women are perceiving, the male persons are active, but the activity of the male person always is limited. So if a male person would take part in producing Jesus, then Jesus also would be limited, but he must be unlimited and so no male person uh, is allowed to play a role. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay. <laughs> and now imagine uh, a guy, Bruno Bauer, with such ideas. He, he published uh, this and already in this time a lot of jokes were made about uh, such an argumentation. And during three or four years he totally changed. He became an atheist. But not only an atheist like maybe you and we are atheists. He wanted to, um, to be an atheist as a theologian. He wanted to be a Protestant theological professor who is teaching atheism as a theological truth. Blasphemy. <laughs> 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 not, n not only blasphemic, <laughs> you must see in this time the, the state of Prussia defined itself as a Christian state. But Christian not in a, in a general sense that Christianity is a background. No, there was a very strong connection between the Protestant church and the Prussian state. The priests, the bishops, were state employees. And so every attack of the church, of the Protestant church, not the Catholic, the Catholics were not liked by, by the Prussian state, but on the Protestant church was at the same time an attack of the, to the state. So of course the Prussian state uh, throw him out, but it was not so easy for, for the state. It was a long process to get rid of Bauer and in Germany this was a public affair which, which interested uh, people. I will tell this story about uh, throwing out Bauer in, in the second volume. In this first volume I cover the time when Bruno Bauer becomes more and more radical when, when he changed. And I think Marx played a crucial role in this process, the young Marx. Usually in the literature it is only discussed the question which was the influence from Bauer to Marx. Because Bauer was more old, more educated, he knew much better at the beginning Hegelian philosophy. So it is only discussed how big or not big was the influence from Bauer to Marx. And I discuss for the first time what could be the influence of the young Mar from the young Marx to the early Bauer. Eu queria que ele resumisse, se ele pudesse fazer uma junção resumida né, de duas eh, considerações aqui. Né. São a, a, as obras A Guerra Civil na França, do Marx, e o 18 do Brumário, que são obras, assim, parece que um pouco... que mereceria, talvez, uma abordagem né, específica, mas, não, infelizmente, não vai dar tempo. E, e que ele explicasse o Projeto Mega, para a gente encerrar. Um, first, of course, these two works, uh, 18th Primaire and, and Civil War in France, are very important. Um, as all the other works, we also have to put them in the line of development. Um, when you see, for example, 18th Primaire, only a few years ago, Marx published Communist Manifesto. Communist Manifesto had a very simple view on the state. The state is a committee of the ruling class. When now you compare this with the analysis of uh, 18th Primaire, nothing is left from this very simplified view, a committee of the ruling uh, class. So we have not only to see such works like 18th Primaire for themselves, we also have to see what revi revisions uh, uh, have done, have, have executed in such works and from 18th Primaire we read Communist Manifesto in a very different way. In, in a similar way, uh, we have the, uh, the civil war in France. It is an, an excellent analysis, not only analysis of Paris Commune, but also uh, an analysis what could be the alternative to, uh, to capitalism. What, what are the forms of organization, the, the forms of decision-making, of self-administration. 
And this we have to see in connection with a later writing, um, the, the critique of the Gotha program. Here I think we have not the point of revision that one neglects the other, but of a, a complementarization. When we take both together the um, civil war in France, the critique of the Gotha program, what Marx very, very briefly writes about uh, socialism and communism, and when we add also some small remarks we can find in volume one of, of Capital at the beginning about the association of free producers and so on, then we have a small sketch what means communism or an, a society beyond capitalism for Marx. Now to the mega uh, project. Um, I think it is in the moment for, for discussing Marx, for, for learning from Marx, it is really the most important project. What I uh, under take with this biography I couldn't do without Mega. Um, so Mega in Germany, financed from the, the German state, is a pure scientific project. The, the persons uh, working on, on Mega, they have very different uh, uh, political um, views. You cannot say it is a left project, it is a, a scientific project according to, to certain rules also given from German state in, in order to get money. But for the left worldwide, I think MEGA is a very essential project and it already inspired not only scientific studies, not only political controversies, how to understand Marx, it also inspired worldwide new editions of Marx texts and the importance of the translation, how you translate, and the importance of editions, how do you edit, how do you put together, is enormous. And therefore it is so, when, when I look to Brazil, I think it is so important that Boy Tempo publishes so many uh, new translations of first uh, Portuguese translations of Marx works, always relying on, on Mega. Um, and I think this will also boost uh, the, the discussion about Marx in, um, in Brazil, such an editorial part. So in this first volume of my biography, um, an important work I deal with is Marx's dissertation. And Boy Tempo, uh, luckily, published uh, a Portuguese translation of this uh, Marx dissertation. So you can read it and also find in my book some hints why it may be important to, to read Marx dissertation. And I hope this will go on, for example, what was not uh, clear to me that in, in Portuguese you don't have uh, very much letters of Marx and Engels translated, but the, the letters are very important as well on a theoretical level. Uh, Marx discusses issues of capital and also on a political and historical uh, level. In Mega we have a new edition of the letters, not only the letters Marx and Engels themselves wrote, but also the letters they received. And on this basis, I hope that one day there will also be a good edition of, of letters of Marx and Engels in, in uh, Brazil. Interessante. Então é isso. A gente ficaria aqui conversando o dia inteiro. Porque as, as considerações dele, as interpretações dele são muito originais. E isso dá asas à imaginação. Yeah. E, Your analysis is very original, so we could talk for hours here. E agradecer muito ele, que 
a contribuição dele é inestimável. Isso, e que, a gente, que eu não podia perder a oportunidade de explorar. <risos> e agradecer também aqui o Felipe Sete, que ajudou bastante a gente aqui. Felipe, muito obrigado. Viu? Obrigado a você, e... espero ter ajudado. Ajudou bastante, não tenho dúvida. E agradecer aí os internautas que estão nos acompanhando, agradecer o Ted, que está aqui pegando a câmera, o jornalista César Xavier, que é do portal, também está aqui acompanhando a gente. Enfim, agradecer a todos vocês, muito obrigado aí, mais uma vez, agradecer. Deixa meu abraço para ele de agradecimento. I thank you for the interesting talk.